I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here at NAB 2023, and this is Bryce Button from AJA. Nice to see you again, Randy. Good to see you. Great show, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a lot going on here. And you, right before the show, mm -hmm. announced a number of new updates and products. Yes. So I'm going to let you dig in whichever way you want, but I know Colorbox is close to our heart. Yes, So especially for this industry or this yeah. side of the industry, right? So we had announced uh, Colorbox uh, September of last year going into ABC, and we're already at 2.0 because... Uh, uh, that's what we've announced for this show is basically a pretty solid uh, update for it. Um, the enthusiasm around the box has been crazy. You'll find a lot of uh, user stories. In fact, we released one this week. Uh, it's finding its way into a lot of DIT cards and then moving on into uh, post-production. Uh, and it's a really exciting box because what we've tried to do is bring in all the different approaches to color transforms, because there's more than one way to skin a cat. Sure. And uh, we have our own uh, AJ color pipeline, which allows you to load uh, 1D uh, look LUTs, 3D LUTs, matrixes, etc. But on top of that, we have all the BBC LUTs. So for 2.0, we updated that to the 1.6 version, so it's the first implementation in hardware for that, and that's going to help a lot between uh, round tripping, between HDR, SDR. It also will be working better with the NBC LUTs. So NBC uh, U LUTs in there as well. Key difference between the two, if you're not familiar, is the BBC are limited legally. So when you go to SDR from HDR, you're at 100 nits. Uh, NBC made the choice because the monitors are out there today when you go to a Best Buy or something. Uh, you've got a lot of uh, brightness you can work with, so they prefer to go to 200 nits, for instance. So the compatibility between the two has been cleaned up with uh, mutual work on, by both teams, which is great. Uh, we have the color front lat LUTs, uh, and now we have an option that you can purchase to go a little further. So we've added A tweaks to their TV mode, um, and we have their uh, live modes as well. And you're, you're able to utilize a far larger parametric set of controls, which people are going to find really helpful, so you're going to want to look at those options. Alongside them, Orion Convert. Uh, for those that don't know, the Orion Convert uh, tool set was actually utilized to create the original NBC units. So that's people like Pablo Garcia. Um, so many great minds coming together with a wealth of knowledge, it's almost unbelievable. Uh, all the leading people when it's comes to color transform work. The other thing we had done when we first announced it is we created an SDK, which is now turning out to be extremely powerful because it allows third parties to utilize the box for a range of items. So on a simple monitor calibration front, we now have Kalman and Light Illusion that utilize the box in real time to help you literally get your displays calibrated correctly. Very important when you're doing this work. Absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the second area is uh, extending RCP kind of control. So with things like Scar, Hoi controllers, uh, and the rest of it. Uh, and I'm very pleased to announce that uh, as one of the partner options there, we now have QTake. So QTake have been very popular for onset dynamic light control. So bringing that into the post-production world, the free items that you get with this update are pretty extensive. You're getting basically uh, C-Log four support, which means you can deal with the ARRI 35, okay. which is going to be coming into a lot of workflows. ARRI also has what they call the ARRI reference. So even if you work with older footage, you can take the materials, the original materials, and work it through the C-Log4 pipeline and gain all that benefits of that new color science. We also have support for the Sony Venice 2, which a lot of folks are excited about. So we have S-Log3 there support. So you're going to find that the ability to match materials as you work from set into post-production is going to be pretty seamless. And then to help all of you, uh, you know, sensors, et cetera, are pretty large these days. Yeah. We now have the ability for uh, the operator with a color box to literally bring in their own PNG files, 
for things like frame lines, that type of stuff. So right from set, you can see, do I have a problem with the boom coming in from the top? All that type of thing. And you can even load watermarks. So if you're in the middle of the process, you don't want people walking off with your footage, put your sure. company logo on. So that's a pretty great uh, set of tools there. Yeah. So um, so quickly, just just run us through, if you don't mind, <laughs> some of the other offerings. Um, I know the Hilo, Dante. I mean, if you could just touch upon them, and then yep. we could we could point people to your website and where they could find out more information. Absolutely. So with with Hilo Plus, which a lot of uh, folks in post production houses have been using as a way to feed uh, cuts and so on off into streaming environments. We've added a couple of nice new features. One, one is the ability and option to use two sets of uh, stereo channels, VU meters throughout the interface now, so you can be really confident that the audio is actually going through to your stream. Yeah. Um, that allows you to do things like put the English commentary on, on one stereo pair and maybe the Spanish commentary on the second and stream them out at the same time. Uh, We've also added what's called play to stream, which means that today you go do a recording in the morning uh, and then you decide because you've got the uh, Asian marker, for instance, you need to play that at a different time because they're fast asleep during the original. You can literally play that file out while you're currently recording a brand new session based on the US based timing because you've been able to get the you know, CEO or whatever to say sure. what they need to say at the right time. So uh, lots of flexibility there. The FSHDR, which a lot of uh, facilities have in-house to deal with all these color transforms. We've and, effectively, and that's your Colorfront um, partnership. Yes, because that's uh, utilizing the Colorfront engine. Yep. It gets all the same nice tweaks within the controls, and there's a lot more controls available within these parameters now, especially to help with highlight items, that type of thing. Uh, that's now in sync. So Working between the color box and the FS HDR product is very seamless. Uh, so we're excited about that for editors. And then if you're still dealing with video over IP, you know, the big announcement in terms of brand new product is you now have another option of HA, and that's Dante Ultra. Uh, most of us are going to be used to Dante Audio, which is audio over IP. It's been around for a long time. It's very easy to set up and configure. It's like dealing with a spreadsheet just in terms of routing materials well now you have a video option and what's great about this video option is it's a really high quality co uh, codec it's JPEG 2000 so it's visually uh, lossless uh, it supports up to 4k 60p it's locked to the audio signal so this one's going to find huge amount of use within live concerts especially which is great because if you're the editor sitting there trying to deal with the project, one of the problems you always had is you had the singer up front, the musicians playing, but if you looked up at the displays behind them, they tended to be a bit behind. So it was very hard to make that sync work. So now you literally have environments where there's huge displays behind them already in sync. So you're not having to sit there as an editor trying to figure out a way to get around that little problem that's going to be baked in and correct for you. Very, very cool. So all of this can be found on your website. Yes, you're going to want to go to aj.com. Probably the quickest way to look through things is simply go to the What's New page, right from the home page, and then branch into these various areas. And on that front, just a key item I think you want to look at is uh, the Discover Media Management that we've been doing, yep. which is revolutionizing the way to curate what the heck's going on in your materials between cloud, offline, sand, etc., and track stuff. And we now have a new plugin there through Oxigil, which allows you to literally do IMF uh, package validations. So if you have to deliver to Netflix or anybody else like that, it'll literally do a check for you and package your stuff correctly so you don't go roundabouts because you don't quite have to do things in order. 